Bookland on today's show, news, notes, injuries, who's in, who's out. We break down the rest of the matchups, and Andy receives his shame. Subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Hungry for something new this year? HelloFresh has got your back. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, investing can be complicated. Whether you're a beginner or whether you've been investing for years, Wealthfront makes it easy. They have the right tools for every portfolio. Wealthfront can create a portfolio of globally diversified, low-cost index funds personalized just for you in minutes. No manual trades, no picking stocks, no watching the stock market every day. They automatically handle all the investing based on the preferences you control. Wealthfront can uh, even help you lower the taxes you pay as you invest. For the average client, their tax loss harvesting can cover more than the low annual 0.25 advisory fee. And best of all, it's automatic. Wealthfront is trusted with over $20 billion of assets, and you can get your first 5000 managed for free by going to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. All you need is $500 to start. To get your first 5000 managed for free for life, go to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash footballers to start growing your savings. Go to Wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Friday, October 22nd, the Fantasy Footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. More matchups to talk about. Wheel of Shame, apparently. Are we do I think we'll probably cut that for time today. Hmm. We got time. Yeah. Oh, we do? yeah. Good work. Good work, team. Yeah, you're fired. <laughs> uh news and notes to talk about injury <laughs> updates. We want to get you ready to compete. On a weekend where it's anarchy, it's com yes. it's like the wild, wild west out there. You find anything, and it can be a weapon, and you might need that to to win <laughs> your fight behind the OK Corral. Because, I mean, we're picking up Dante Pettis's. We're playing just bottom of the. You know, you, uh, there's been moments in certain leagues where you're looking at the waiver wire and you're going. David Johnson's a revenge <laughs> game. Can I pick him up and play? Oh, him? you're saying uh, I. I really wish Brandon Ayuk was available in this league right. so that I could play him this week. Um, no, it's crazy. And and you can – I mean, there's something fun about trying to find the diamond in the rough. The diamond. That's right. Where I have done so much pivot – I have one wide receiver spot that I have to fill with a waiver wire player. Mm -hmm. And I have ping-ponged – like last night, and thankfully I said it on the show – but I went away from Donovan Peoples-Jones, and then we got this horrible surprise. What was that all about? He's not going to play with no news. If you want to put – look, the, the 49ers beat writers. Don't let us know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They're number one in that department. But in training, the Browns beat writers didn't let us know what was happening with Donovan Peoples-Jones. And they got him. That, that, was, that was the edge that took the, the Cleveland Browns over the top. That was the difference to, last night. Yeah, they beat the Broncos because – they never saw that coming. Yeah, they thought they were preparing. The whole for, defense was Donovan. It was we got to shut down Peoples Jones. Yeah, and then it was no, he's not going to. Where play. is he? Odell Beckham is going to play, and so is Jarvis. We got you, suckers. Okay, so transitioning right into the recap of last night, I wanted to run this by you. I believe Odell Beckham Jr. is a full drop. Oh, Ooh, I would love to hear you goodness. say it because Obvious. because Jarvis is back. Maybe. And he okay. limped off the field at the end. Jarvis might be hurt again. I just the the injury risk combined with the lack of production in every type of game possible for Beckham. This is why I traded him at the beginning, so I wasn't tempted to get old Beckham, old Dell Beckham yeah. in my mind and think I'm going to get thirty point performances. I mean, even last year when he had a handful of them, it was really one three touchdown game that just went crazy. 
The rest were pedestrian. I don't know. I think he might be a full drop. Yeah, I I don't mind you full dropping him at all. The the reality is when he came down on his shoulder, I mean, this is a this is a guy trying to play through an injury that it seems like he can't play through mm -hmm. on a team that doesn't throw the ball a lot with a current backup quarterback in and it's been years since true relevance. That being said, it's kind of like what we've talked about with um Allen Robinson. When you have such a big name, try to package trade. And and maybe Odell Beckham's been so irrelevant, so hurt that you won't be able to, but before dropping, I would always No, that's try to trade and capitalize on the name value. And the math there is, you know, go for another wide receiver, offer Beckham and a piece, and see what you can do. I traded Beckham straight up for Marvin Jones two weeks ago. I'm content with that trade. So you're just saying like get rid of him at all costs. That's what I'm saying because it removes the temptation to play a player who, when not battling injury, is still a one in four shot of giving you something. That's the part that kills me is it's like if he's healthy, he was still a problem for your team. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been rough. Um, I traded him before he was hurt. So yeah. uh, otherwise, I mean, not the best game that I've ever seen in no, my life. No, certainly not. But you have to start with the fantasy football hero. This was legendary. Dearness Johnson from the waiver wire to 22 carries, 146 rushing yards, a touchdown, a pair of receptions. Like he's going to be a top 12 running back on the week. And if you, if you fab dropped, if you priority burned for Dearness Johnson for a one week, th this was, this was more than you possibly could have been hoping for or expecting. So I mean, this, he was the he's, story. He is the legend to me. Yeah, now. that last night's game is Dearness Johnson's yeah. game. That's that is the whole kit and caboodle. And he, he was, was just he was a beast, and, man. And it was a lot of it was him. This is yes. yards after contact. This is he's making someone miss or breaking a tackle and and going for an extra four, five, eight yards. It, he was out outstanding. Um, it it makes me a little bit happier from last year's recommendation where he didn't come through. Like he right. is talented. Um, but hopefully you had him and didn't go against him. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, neither quarterback threw for 200 yards. I mean, that, that's one of the headlines. So you didn't have a lot to go around. You know, Sutton's a great receiver. Five for 68 is not going to win you the week. Didn't score. Noah Fant was fine at five. I mean, not even fine, really. Five for 39. Disappointing. Yeah. Javante was only okay because he got into the end zone. Same with Gordon. Yeah. Who, they, they both did the same thing again. I mean, they... they the nice thing was Javante had six receptions. That was out out of the norm for him. Normally, yeah. Gordon was at his level. Um, Gordon had double the carries. Javante had more than double the receptions. We live in the same world again where this is a bad offense. I thought they were going to make a quarterback change halfway through the game, and I think if Bridgewater had fell on his face with the first drive in the second half, you would have seen Drew Locke. So moving forward, bad vibes for the – for yeah. the Broncos. The, uh, the Cleveland Browns found a fire extinguisher, and Tim Patrick, mm. uh, Fireball Jones, was held. Ball. Yeah, held, was, Jones. was held uh, two for 16. He did have a target in the end zone that he maybe could have caught, but he didn't, so irrelevant. No, he, he had – oh, you're talking about the out-of-bounds? Yeah. Yeah, because he did catch it. I mean, yes. he technically caught the ball. But. Okay, well, yeah. established possession inside the field. That's right. That's right. But no, no one else was really relevant. Five for 37 for Landry. Well, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday we give away something special from pristineauction.com. And today, I'm a big fan of this item. In fact, I will declare myself the winner of it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Every Friday we give ourselves something. <laughs> no, uh, Deontay Johnson signed jersey. Congratulations uh, yes. to one of our supporters that joined the foot.com. We are Legion. <laughs> oh. So I'm a little frightened. That's your that's your username. You said this is you? Uh right. This is my I support us. I support us on Patreon. Um, join the foot.com. Thank you very much. We are Legion and congratulations. We'll be sending you a Deontay Johnson signed Jersey from pristine auction.com where you out there can use the code ballers and they'll give you $10 towards some sweet sports memorabilia. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by sleeper. Well, we could get more case Keenum moving forward. Another reason to drop Odell Beckham jr. 
Uh, Baker Mayfield is dealing with a very significant injury that is going to be pain tolerance and then some healing has to happen. He also has a fractured humerus bone in on top of the torn labrum. That's not very funny. No, that's a bad name for a... For I was a, wondering who was going to take it. The joke? Yep. I was waiting, man. And I nailed it. <laughs> I mean, whoo! I do believe that the name of the humerus has something to do with the name of the funny bone, too. Like when I, you when you jam the nerve? I'm not willing to vet that. Uh, well, then it's true. <laughs> Tyreek Hill did not practice on Wednesday or Thursday, but he didn't need to practice last week to come out and be a difference maker. Yeah, I think this is going to be the norm for a while. A.J. Brown didn't practice. He is still so, dealing with, with the illness. He said that he can't oh, keep anything down. Like, his body's rejecting it all. Yeah, I saw that last night. Another one of those, like, you know, how he tweeted he's never going to eat fast food again. He just said his body can't keep anything down. I look at the timestamp. I assume this was from before last Sunday. It was still going. So, at the very least, you have confidence from the fact that he's fine. Like, he, he played through it last week, had a decent game. He was light on his feet. And, yes, he was light on his feet. Um, and then, obviously, more time is only going to be better than last week. Julio, limited practice, dealing with the hamstring. I mean, he won't be there. Will he not? No, he won't be there because he was dealing with a hamstring issue. Here's the thing. When people are dealing with a hamstring issue and they take some time off, they miss a game, and then they come back and they, they tweak it. They re-aggravate the hamstring. That's a done deal. Like, I don't remember a situation where that happens. And tweak? then the guy's yeah. like, oh, psych. I'm fine. No, you were resting this muscle. You came back and hurt the muscle again. It needs more time. That happened with Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I bet AJ he limps Brown. back out there. <laughs> yeah. He is the one player that gets these practice reports and has played in the past for Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm thinking of Sterling Shepard, who did the same thing, was limited yesterday uh, with the hamstring again. I just... Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that then. The, the Giants are running out of players. Kenny Galladay has not practiced. Kadarius Tony is not going to play. Uh, very doubtful for the game. And then Sterling Shepard, who practiced in full on Wednesday, was limited on Thursday to a, due to a new injury, dealing with or a setback, I should say, of the hamstring. And so you're looking at a wide receiver core right now that I believe I, I checked it this morning. Indications are that Darius Slayton will be back out there, but he's coming off a hamstring, so there's re-injury risk with Slayton. And then you have Dante Pettis called up from the practice squad. Colin Johnson, I believe. Evan Ingram didn't practice due to a calf injury. Oh, John Ross, baby. No, he, he was limited. Is he going to play? Wait, is John thought, Ross injured? No, John Ross. Oh, my is, gosh. I think he's very unlikely to play. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, good good job, who Joe was, Judge. Make him run more laps. Who was? Oh, yeah. Who was the, the random New York Giants? Ramsey's pardon? Yeah. That I started on. <laughs> yeah, give that guy a call. Yeah, and he's so, good for it. You know, CJ Board went on IR. Goodness gracious! So they are not doing well. And and uh, did we say Evan Engram didn't yeah. practice either? Yeah, <laughs> but he's reported that he's supposed to practice today. Okay, Eng Ingram. Okay, no amount of practice will fix Evan Ingram. Yeah, probably not. Latavius Murray didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday, so we're working towards a, a decision there. Which the combination of the early. Uh, Activation off the practice squad from Lev Bell with no participation. I don't think Latavius Murray plays. But if he doesn't, it's still very murky. It's still very – like there's no guarantee that DeMonta Freeman's the best play. Uh, Lev Bell got a bunch of work. I mean, it was ugly. And then there's Tyson. Like we know Tyson's the best actual runner, so it's like if he gets on a roll in the game mm – -hmm. What happens to Devonta Freeman and Lev Bell's production? So It should be Tyson. It will be Devonta Freeman. That's how I see it. Yeah, and, and I am scared to play all of them, to be honest with you. Damian Williams will n not be able to clear the COVID-19 protocols until Saturday. We don't know if he will, but this is going to take you right up to game time. I'll be on Sunday Live this week filling in for Mike. We'll have news on Damian Williams and whether you can move forward with Herbert in a brutal matchup, but he could be a volume but if he play. Get, if he gets everything, then you can still play him. Yeah, how are we feeling about Alex Collins' chance to play? Well, it came out that Pete Carroll said that he's looking better, he's going to participate, and we thought everything was trending well, but it turns out that Alex Collins did not practice on Thursday. Um, it's a Monday night game, so this would be that one. You know, we don't usually care about Wednesday practice reports, so I'm not too worried yet, um, but we will see. You know, you really need him to be practicing at least limited today, to have any confidence 
um, for Alex Collins. But again, not a great matchup against New Orleans Saints. You've got Rashad Penny back. If you can avoid this situation of the Seahawks running backs, I would that that is my recommendation this week. And uh, Brooksy, if we get like we did yesterday, any reports from Washington regarding Gibson, McLaurin, Ricky Seals, Jones, by the end of the show, let us know if they're out there. It was very a very good sign that Gibson was mm -hmm. out yes. at practice. I mean, it made for someone like I have a roster with Gibson on it. I was making plans to be without him. It lets me be more flex. I mean, on a tough week, it let me make decisions on my bench where it was like, I think Gibson's going to play. And then I think that means he's better than the guys I could have picked up to fill in for him. So I can be more, you know, use that spot for someone else. Mm -hmm. So far, it seems like Gibson and McLaurin are at least going to be limited in practice today. That's what it seems I'd like. I'd expect them to play then. Yeah. That was today's news and notes. Don't forget the Injury Blitz podcast. Uh, Jointhefoot.com with Matthew Betts. More important than ever with all those injury updates. And um, make sure you grab the Sleeper app. They are the leader in breaking news alerts. They'll let you know what's going on, ins and outs, and those type of things. Back into the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. Covered five games on yesterday's show. You can go back and listen. The Washington Packers game, Chiefs, Titans, Falcons, Dolphins, Jets, Patriots, Panthers, Giants. It really seemed like that was one team, the yeah. Washington Packers. That's but, their new name. Yeah. Oh, man. They, they've, after f multiple years, they've decided to just, just go with Packers. They're like, people with, love the Packers. Right. Let's, let's be that. Yeah, and people pack stuff in every state, so you can do that. It's allowed. Um. Yeah, I'm seeing some reports coming out with McLaurin going through drills and Gibson getting work in. So. Okie dokie. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, if they play, they're better than they both were last week. Cincinnati at 4-2 and two take on the Baltimore Ravens at 5-1. and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line was Ravens minus 6, over under a 46.5. My preseason prediction of the Ravens winning the Super Bowl started to look real shaky after a week or two. It did. But they are getting healthier. The defense looks better. Lamar looks great. They do not – it doesn't feel like they're 5-1. and one. I agree with that. Like, it's because they won against the Detroit Lions on a 66-yard field goal. Yeah, I suppose that factors in. But the Bengals have played well, um, but the Ravens are heavily favored here. Joe Burrow and company, you know, the future's bright, but the confidence in this matchup is – limited to me in terms of their receiving options. The Ravens are seventh against opposing wide receivers. They absolutely dismantled the Chargers receiving game last week. Yeah. Justin Herbert was a disaster. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams were non factors. And so because of that, it's Jamar Chase and no one else for me. Uh yeah, I don't I don't have a problem with that. The like T. Higgins is still seeing volume and and is a good player i would expect him to bounce back sooner than later uh but maybe not in this match or maybe you have to wait till next week against the jets yeah if this was a full slate i would i would agree that it's a bad matchup for for higgins and obviously there's no way in the world you're benching jamar chase but t higgins is a better option than <laughs> than i i would play him over a dante pettis over a brandon Ayuk. would you play those guys over t higgins well, I'm not playing Pettis over him with the, the how shaky that is, but I would play Brandon Ayuk this week. Yeah, I would. Uh, T. Higgins, I mean, I saw a stat this morning. McCole Hardman's averaging more yards per game than T. Higgins is averaging. Hmm. And even though Higgins can get into the end zone, um, the yards have not been there to sustain kind of that baseline. So you mix the matchup in with that doubt. Are you playing Higgins over Ayuk? I throw oh man that one's that one's personal. I, I um, think I think Ayuk might have a week. Yeah, he and very I hate saying that. He very I, well might. Um that's why I uh, picked him up and dropped Dearness Johnson last week. And then dropped Ayuk <laughs> after that. That is true. Well, I didn't need him because I had Sterling Shepard. Um But hmm. you do need him cuz now you don't have Oh yeah, that happened yeah. too. So great. Uh Joe Mixon obviously <laughs> is someone you could play in this game. So if you're worried about the the wide receiving options, does that mean you're avoiding Joe Burrow as well? He's been he's been on a hot streak. Uh I believe in him long term, but if he doesn't have T. Higgins or Tyler Boyd as relevant, will he be able to have himself a good fantasy game? 
Look, yeah, I'm I'm trying to find a better ceiling than Joe Burrow this week, for sure. I would play Matt Ryan over him. I mean, Joe Burrow, for all the kind of fanfare and hope and optimism, has never finished above eight at the position this year. It's not going to happen on the road against Baltimore, in my opinion. So, um, Yeah, that's what it comes down to. So you'd, you'd play Ryan over Burrow? Yeah, I would. Hey, Tannehill? Yeah. Tua? Mm. I wouldn't go that far. but okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say this. I, I do see this there's a potential outcome here for this to be one of those divisional defensive really just brutal games where it's not great for fantasy uh lower scoring um the the winner of this takes control of the division this is a super important real NFL game this week yeah and the defense for the Bengals has been pretty good this year so far we talked about the backfield for Baltimore um it's troublesome I guess the confidence is if you have to throw someone out there, Freeman takes the cake. That is yeah. correct. <sighs> I know. it's, But you got to do what you got to do. What about uh, the volume play of Herbert if Damian Williams is still out versus Devonta Freeman? I would rather play Devonta Freeman. You you saw Devonta Freeman come in last week in, you know when Latavius Murray got injured. He got nine carries in limited work. He only played 30% of the snaps, got nine carries. And 53 yards on nine carries, so – he he didn't look that bad to be honest. Yeah, I, I, he looked I, okay. You know, it's like we don't want to um, tout Devonta Freeman as great because he's <laughs> certainly well past his prime. But I I do think he'll be the primary running back and be an okay start. Well, time just got one of those sleeper sleeper alerts. Can you give me the sound effect? Uh, Latavius Murray likely out. So that's okay. more, more definitive. There you go. Uh, Hollywood Brown, Rashad Bateman. Uh, I think Bateman's a nice DFS shot this week. Sure. Him He's and very, very cheap in DFS. Him and like Dante Pettis are like some DFS dart throws that I like heading into the week. Um, Bateman's going to get targets, and he may elevate himself on this depth chart very quickly to a 1A, 1B with Hollywood Brown. Um, and then if you guys are right about the, the volume saying, you know, northward of where we're yeah. used it, to the, seeing. The pie's a little bit bigger. On the other side, Joe Mixon, you're playing him, but Samaj P. Ryan is off of the COVID list, so I would imagine he'll be back to his backup role. His his backup role and taking away some third downs from from Joe Mixon, so it will be interesting to watch where Mixon went. You know, his opportunities jumped up to 24 this past week against Detroit. I don't think it'll be that high for him this week. And what's what's up, Cactus? Did I get him or did you do bid money? I, try, I bid a dollar like two minutes ago, and then uh, Mike had no dollar more. What, Perfect. For, uh, Brandon Ayuk was uh, who you, you dropped, and then you tried to get him back, but then you couldn't get him back because Mike took him. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that. Thanks. All I, right. I may or may not have bumped my thing to $2 about 30 seconds ago. No, you didn't. <laughs> from what? From, from zero? From oh, one. from one. Okay. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Sorry. <laughs> welcome to the League of Record. Um, recently, uh, oh, yes. Kyle the Borgogan went on a radio show and was talking about how competitive we are here at the studio. And we were talking to Brooks on the footcast yesterday about how competitive we are and how Brooks wishes he had the drive and the competition that we had to defeat each other at everything. Uh, I believe he said he just wanted 1% of it. Just give yeah. me a little bit. I don't think he wants the full dose. No. I mean, Al, how do you stack up you think do you, are you i'm right there with you yeah, yeah i, I yeah. think so the best part about brandon reason, and i you unhealthy levels of of competitiveness yeah. is uh who knows if i'll play him i just knew it would inflict pain upon jason if i picked him up did the pain um <laughs> are you feeling the pain yeah i i might drop him on sunday morning right no <laughs> it'd be great and then <laughs> screenshot send me a photo um that'd be great Brandon Ayuk, uh, uh, so you're still looking for, uh, you're still hunting. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna quit fantasy football this week. <laughs> uh, before we get to our uh, next matchup, I want to thank today's sponsors, Indochino, longtime sponsor. Mm. They make the best custom fitted suits, and this is the time of life where we're getting back to events. We're getting, uh, I've got a uh, sister in law's wedding coming up. We've got things that were maybe postponed that are now like time to get dressed up, get fancy like, and Indochino's suits are amazing. They are perfectly custom tailored. You customize every single aspect of it. And if you've never worn tailored clothing before, you will never feel, feel better 
than in tailored clothing. It fits perfect. You look great. There's no bunchy shoulders, nothing wrong. Uh, and they have custom fitted, not just the suits, but the shirts, the casual wear uh, at surprisingly affordable prices. Every piece is fully custom. And the best part is Indochino suits start at just $3.99 with all the customizations included. Indochino is now open at select Nordstrom stores, giving you even more ways to get great fitting and personalized clothing. Find your nearest location at Indochino.com. I, I went in and did the fitting in person. So easy, so nice. Right now you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using our code footballers at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino, I-N-D-O, chino.com promo code footballers we also want to thank chime financial for supporting the podcast in fact on the drive in today i was i was listening to the radio and they were saying that these banking fees are getting crazy um and here's a little breaking news for you when your online checking account balance is running low i don't think you need a 33 dollars overdraft fee that's not helping the situation i tend to agree um in fact in 2019 traditional banks have they took 11 billion dollars in in overdraft fees. That's ridiculous. That's not what Chime hey, does. Hey, you don't have money? I'm going to take more. Yeah. Chime is an award-winning app and a debit card that has saved its members more than $10 billion in overdraft fees with SpotMe fee-free overdraft. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. Now you deserve to have financial peace of mind. But I think that we can agree on that. Join the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. And you can get started today at Chime.com slash footballers. That's Chime.com slash footballers. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank in a members of FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft fee savings based on eligible members' use of spot me versus $33 average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee data based on bank rate, checking account survey, and CRL June 2020 overdraft fee report. All right, back into the matchups. Philadelphia Eagles at 2-4, and four, taking on the 4-2 and two Las Vegas Raiders. DraftKings Sportsbook line Raiders minus three. Over-under is 49.5. First take at this game, guys. What are the big decisions? Man, I, look, Jalen Hurts is in. Uh, and you're probably going to – I'm good still playing Devontae Smith. He's running a ton of routes. He's he's run the eighth most, uh, eight most, uh, eighth most routes of the position. So I'm still going to play him, even though it hasn't it hasn't hit every single week. But you've seen enough out of Devontae Smith that you're going to play him. The question on the Eagles side for me is, what do you do with Miles Sanders? Mm -hmm. Where the opportunities haven't necessarily gotten to the point where you're real happy starting him. But the snaps are starting to trend in a way that it looks like Miles Sanders is on the precipice of becoming fantasy viable again. Yeah, it is possible. The Raiders don't have a phenomenal run defense, so the matchup is okay. I think Miles Sanders is someone you could play, but you just you've got to view him as a flex level player right now. I get that some of the behind the scenes numbers, the snap counts, the uh you know, the running back opportunity share is there, but it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that he just has he's done nothing. Right. I mean, fantasy wise, if if you've had him, you're talking about you know sub uh, ten points almost every single week. And Las Vegas allowing the third most ten plus yard run, so they're allowing they're lo they're allowing those chunk plays on the ground. And Miles Sanders has flashed with those a, a couple over the past. Few I'm weeks. definitely playing him over any of the bad kind of bye week options. The Mark Ingrams, okay. the Kenyon Drakes. I'm playing him over those players. I would agree with that. Wouldn't Miles you? Sanders or Mike Davis against Miami? Mike Davis. Yeah, I'll go with the volume in that situation. Miles Sanders or Devontae Booker versus Carolina? Sanders. Probably go with Booker. <laughs> I think that's where I just go with the matchup. One, Carolina's a tough matchup, um, whereas the, the Raiders are Okay, last matchup. one. Miles Sanders or J.D. McKissick against Green Bay? McKissick, smooches. Yep. 
Okay. Um, so we're not super confident in Sanders just yet. Jalen Hurts, by several metrics, is the most consistent fantasy quarterback in all the land. Just don't pay attention to the real NFL. No. And Dallas Goddard's my start of the week at tight end. He will get his chance to shine. I believe Jack Stoll will be out there now with the Zach Ertz, uh no longer a part of the team. Derek Carr, I mean, he has put up some impressive numbers this year. He is still in the top three, I believe, in total yards at the uh, total passing yards. Brady is now leading the way. And, um, you know, Henry Ruggs has been involved. You get deep shots to him every game. He's been top 12 four of six weeks. Derek Carr? Yeah. Yeah, so is there any reason why you wouldn't put him out here? Yes. And <laughs> the reason I wouldn't, or the reason I would at least consider other options like Matt Ryan and, and Ryan Tannehill is Josh Jacobs. If the if the Raiders come out and have a great game and, and, and win this game and Josh Jacobs has a big game, there, when, when Jacobs has his big games, it tends to nerf the rest of the team's fantasy productions. If you look at how this lines up with the Philadelphia Eagles – defense where they are really really bad against running backs really good against wide receivers just as far as fantasy points given up this strikes me as one of those games that could be a josh jacobs uh fest which just so does that mean you're playing burrow over Derek carr i would play burrow over Derek carr yes okay interesting mike would you play burrow or Derek carr i would play burrow um are you taking a shot with the wide receivers here for for Las Vegas or I honestly to me Henry Ruggs has worked his way up that I'm gonna I would flex him essentially every week Ruggs or Hardman this week um man that's a difficult one the they're playing Tennessee Kansas yeah. City I guess I lean Hardman it's the highest over and under the week yeah I, I lean Hardman slightly but Ayuk or uh Ruggs Ruggs okay Ruggs I'll take the shot all right, uh, the Detroit Lions at 0-6 take on the 5-1 and Los Angeles Rams. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Rams minus 15.5. The over-under is 51. There are two games this week where you don't – I can't find the path for victory. It's the Lions, obviously, against the Rams, and it's the Texans against the Cardinals. Um, Rams have been playing great. It's a nice over-under, but it's all on their side, 33 Point three points. That's the implied point total for the Rams. I mean, Jason started the week is Matthew Stafford. You don't need a, a compelling argument to have confidence against the Rams. Daryl Henderson. Against the Lions? Well, yes, yeah, sorry. Against the Lions. <laughs> and uh, it's a revenge game for Stafford. And then Daryl Henderson's a, a great start against the 32nd ranked oh, yes. run defense. And Sonny Michelle's been beat up. You know, Henderson is going to get all the work. I don't think the Lions can stop the Rams' offense. So even if there's a, a let-up here or a surprise, I think that this game could be more competitive uh, than, you know, at first glance. Obviously, a 15.5 point over-under says it's going to be completely non-competitive. I think the reason for that is that the Lions' defense cannot possibly contain the Rams' offense. However, the Lions' offense, I you know, there's, there's an emotional game. This is your quarterback is – was traded away from this team, and this is a team that lives on emotion and caffeine. It's a double revenge game. Right, a double revenge game. So, you know, uh, last year the when the Rams were 17.5-point favors, favorites against the winless Gase-led Jets at home, they lost that game. <laughs> um, so maybe it's a trap. But What? Um, I'm fine with, you know, you're not going to sit DeAndre Swift. No. Um, and I, you're not going to sit TJ Hawkinson. You're not going to say any Rams. So the question becomes, Can are are you comfortable playing Amon Ross St. Brown? Are you comfortable playing Jamal Williams? Are you okay playing Jared Goff? I'm I'm, I'm going to avoid all three, even yeah, if I... I'm out on Goff. The question for... I'm out on Williams, too. Yeah. Williams, you would, you would hope to find a different option. Like, okay, here we go. Uh... Mark Ingram, we've been talking about him a lot. Jamal Williams against the Rams, or Mark Ingram against Arizona. Yeah, I'll take I'll take sixteen to eighteen touches for Ingram and hope he finds the end zone. Well, Jamal could could be a sixteen touch player. Last week was very strange for for Jamal. You saw a a massive uh, a massive drop in opportunities. He went from 14, 14, 15, 6. So I I don't think that that's you playing what Jamal they want then? To do. Are you, is that your I, answer to the question? 
in in certain situations, I will be yeah, as a as a low. Let's go high end running back three. Oh. Yeah, I'm so I'm, the fle a flex type of. I'm and Ross St. Brown is just in that category of the peripheral like spot start, the Darius Slaytons or the the McCole Hardmans or the Brandon Ayukes or like you know you're going to get eight targets from a quarterback that's not hitting more than 200 yards a game against the tough defense on the road. Jason, yeah. would you play Jamal Williams or AJ Dillon? AJ I'll play Dillon's AJ taking. Dillon. AJ Dillon's usage has been on the way up. While Jamal Williams had a uh, you know a bad week this last All right. week, Cooper Cup joined Randy Moss as the only other player in league history with 600 receiving yards and seven touchdowns in the first six games of a season. Impressive, on fire. Robert Woods, couple of good weeks, fantasy wise. So we can probably keep playing him in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Higby has not been very good. He's just been kind of okay, ping pong in between slightly top ten weeks and then not being utilized. What's your confidence level going into week seven with Tyler Higby rest of season? Rest of season, I think Higby is going to be one of those streaming options where you, you might want to play, him, every in the, week. play him in the right matchups. And, and hopefully by this time, if you've been kind of the Higby manager, you were able to uh, grab someone like a Dalton Schultz off of waivers. But it, the reality is if you don't have one of those top guys, Higby is this – he's in the same boat and the same caliber as the rest of them, which is – if you don't have a great matchup, you can still play him and hope for 50 yards. Would you rather move forward with Higby or Zach Ertz? Um, it's early, but I think Zach Ertz. Okay. Um, the other huge uh, favorite this week, the Houston Texans moving on to the Arizona Cardinals or taking on the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Texans 1-5, and five, Cardinals 6-0. and oh. Arizona is a 17.5-point home favorite. The over-under is 47-and-a-half. It's very similar to the Detroit game in, in as much as Arizona's implied point total is almost 33. They've only been the Cardinals. Uh, more than a 15-point favorite one time in their franchise history. They're at home. There isn't a clean – I mean, the only path that I can see for Houston winning the ball game is multi, like a special teams play and a couple of turnovers by the Cardinals. Because I don't think the offense, again, it's like Detroit. I don't think the offense can do enough against the Cardinals. The Cardinals are seventh against opposing fantasy quarterbacks, sixth against running backs, first against tight ends, and they're playing great. And they, they may have Chandler Jones back. This is a pretty much – it's it's Brandon it's, Cooks, but yes. I don't have the confidence Mike has with Brandon Cooks this week, but he's certainly the one play – of the Texans that you can throw out there. Yeah, Cardinals 21st against fantasy wide receivers. I, I have confidence in, in Brandon Cooks. He had 13 targets last week. He's had uh, three games over 10 targets. He, he's a fine uh, wide receiver play, I, I believe. But outside of him, I'm not starting anyone else on the Houston Texans side. I know there's the David Johnson revenge narrative, but it's pretty irrelevant. Um, you start your Cardinals, especially I think James Conner is uh, a great play this week. And – Outside of Brandon are, Cooks, I'm not starting any Texas. Are you full go on Chase Edmonds? The matchup makes you full go. Even with the last two weeks of of lowered, not just uh, opportunities, but lowered efficiency as well. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, third in the league in yards per carry, or sorry, yards per touch. And so he doesn't need a ton of work against this defense to do it. And so if you're 17 and a half point favorites, I'm confident enough. I'm definitely playing him over all those bottom of the barrel running back options, Jason. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am as well. I, okay. I don't think that there's uh, – this game will end up with the Cardinals running the game out. And so you hope – And that'll be James Conner. That will be James Conner, but you, you, uh, you, you're, not, you're not going to just have it be 100% James Conner and never let Chase Edmonds touch the ball. Um, I, think, I don't want to have a, a, a weak winning Chase Edmonds performance on my bench. And there, that's, that's in the range of outcomes in this game. Sure. Yeah. Um, I do worry a little bit about the A.J. Green, Christian Kirk, Rondell Moore side in the sense that if the second half is more running, you would have had to have had the wide receiver really get involved early. Um, I think you can play him because obviously the Cardinals are 32.5 point implied uh, total, um, but they aren't – I would rather play them you know, against uh, the Chiefs than even though the Texans are a bad defense, the game script probably won't go their way. How does that affect Zach Ertz, your start of the week? Well, it, Zach Ertz matches up just so – we've seen it for year after year after year. When you are a team that really can't guard tight end, 
then every team exploits that. And um, Zach Ertz is a tight end, and the Houston Texans just have <laughs> – they have given up massive games to tight ends every single week. Yeah, try out the new toy. Arizona trades for Zach Ertz, get him involved in the offense. Um, Zach Ertz is a tight end. Yes, and that is his best attribute. Chicago Bears at 3-3 three and three take on the 5-1 and one Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Buccaneers minus 12. The over-under is 47.5 points. It's another situation where it's like, can the Bears' offense do enough to keep this game competitive? The line says they can't. Um, you know, Justin Fields is being sacked on 15% of his dropbacks, by far number one in the NFL. He's also only passing the ball 16 times a game. The Buccaneers' pass rush is going to do a number on him. Uh, that being said, you can't run against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, you know, you're hoping that Fields, in limited amounts of passing attempts, finds Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney and gives you. This is the week for him, man. I really, I think so. I, I think Allen Robinson has a has his best game of the year this week. I do too. I'm I'm fine starting Allen Robinson. The 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 Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be down four cornerbacks. Carlton Davis, who is awesome, is gone. Their 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 free safety is gone. It, the The Bucks are going to score, and you can't run on them. So, with with a really injured secondary, I have to imagine that that Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson are are fine. Um, I, I think that they're decent plays here. And that's why Mike likes Cole Komet getting involved, maybe protect him from the pass rush. Khalil Herbert, Damian Williams, you know, it's going to get really murky. Let me, let me put it this way. I think Williams will probably get cleared on Saturday. And if he does, I would... Bench them all? I would mm -hmm. bench both. Okay, that makes it easy. Um, we did just get some breaking news. Somebody have that button? Here we go. Ooh. Breaking news. Rob Gronkowski, Antonio Brown, out. Really? Out. Oh, my that, goodness. That means uh, I wish I had bid $2 on Brandon Ayuk a, min <laughs> a minute ago as I am an Antonio Brown manager. He's available for trade. <laughs> I, w I would I'd rather be dead, Mike. Than, than, uh, but, yeah, I mean, just, that's. Just two fab dollars. Wow. <laughs> Another, you know, you you uh, you were hoping Brown would be back out there. He's been so good, and you need him this week. That's wild on a Friday. Yeah. So no AB and All no right. no Gronkowski again. So Mike, I know you moved on from Gronkowski in one of our leagues. I mean, you're in a different situation, but yeah. But there is still like, if I could trade Gronkowski on the promise of the first few weeks, which were touchdown dependent. Obviously, it's Gronkowski, but he's not the old Gronkowski. If I could do that, you know, we talked about how overdue Chris Godwin is around the mm -hmm. around the red zone. If I could cash in on Gronkowski and go pick up uh, a Dalton Schultz, um, a, a long term, you know, make him package trade him for Kyle Pitts, put myself in a position to have a younger, healthy tight end, I would do it. Oh yes, I, at this point you would. You got to look at the schedule where he's out this week, and, and if I'm not mistaken let me pull up the schedule just to be correct so next week uh they will be taking on the buccaneers will be taking on the saints and then it's a bye week so you may have maybe gronk is active next week but is it gronk right like right back into just your no lineup confidence. do you m make sure he's going to play a full amount of snaps does the team choose hey we're we're kicking butt here our record looks good Let's give Gronk two more weeks of rest because we're in this for the long haul, and then all then all of a sudden you don't have Gronk until week ten. Like this, this stinks. I was, I was expecting that Gronk would play this week. Yeah, now he's missed four games. Yeah, Tom Brady. Of course, you play him. Same with Leonard Fournette. I mean, he has turned into a, um, an every week start. Right. Yeah, yes. he has. He is. He's actually really valuable and the fact that they've been using him so much in the passing game with Antonio Brown out you would expect Chris Godwin to step up with the, you know that kind of uh intermediate routes and and probably a few more dump offs available to Leonard Fournette Leonard Fournette's a, a very good play okay any other matchups in this game you want to talk about 
Mm, no. How about Sunday night football then? The Colts two and four against the two and three San Francisco 49ers. The DK Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus four and a half. The over under is forty four. That's not a high one. When they were booking this game, <laughs> they, they weren't like, there's no way that both the Colts and the 49ers will be sub five hundred teams, Two right? Super Bowl contenders. Man, what a good oh, whoops. game. Jimmy G making his return. Hooray. Carson Wentz. Um, leads the NFL in interception percentage in, in terms of the least amount. Um, he has been pretty he, good recently. Yes, he has looked solid the last couple of weeks. Uh, he has one interception on the year, and that was back in week two against the Rams. He is not a fantasy option. He's managing the offense, had a nice passer rating last week, won the ball game. You know, they won 31-3 to last week. He finished as the 14th best fantasy wide receiver uh, quarterback, mm. and now you have likely no T. Y. Hilton in this game. Um, did not practice again. You lost Paris Campbell, who was a big play threat. This is going to be a game in which they're going to ride Jonathan Taylor. They're mm -hmm. going to do what they do, which is try to slow down Jimmy Garoppolo and Debo Samuel, which they'll probably not have a lot of success doing, and um, you know, try to run the ball. Where are you at with uh, Michael Pittman Jr. for the Indianapolis Colts? The the target share has gone down, uh, but now the fine with him. Okay, so, so with Paris and T.Y. Hilton out, I would expect the target share will go back up. Greater than you know, better than Ayuk as uh, an option. That was the name I was I was going to bring up. Michael Pittman or Allen Robinson? Um, Michael Pittman. I the, one comment on Ayuk. I was I was. You know, we've been talking about the San Francisco beat writers, but see, I didn't lean on them. I leaned on Joey Bosa and some logic. And if there's a week for them to come out and do something, 21st ranked against wide receiver, they're favored by week. So you have an opportunity to integrate them into the offense a little bit better. Maybe another week to get even healthier. And Joey Bosa came out and he said, look, we're expecting big things from Ayuk in the second half of the season. There's certainly opportunity here. Although Debo is a must start each and every week. You know he his role in the offense is guaranteed. Ayuk do you mean Nick emerged. Bosa? I do. Okay, I was like, why are we getting San Francisco information from Joey? <laughs> I didn't say Joey, did I? You did. Did I say Joey? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, Joey told Nick, and then Nick told <laughs> or Nick Nick told yeah, Joey. Joey told Nick. <laughs> Get that guy involved, man. He's on my fantasy team. The Bosa family. I called them and. No, okay, uh, okay, yeah, there we go. Elijah, a conference call. A conference call. The whole I wanted him all the way in. Elijah Mitchell, confidence level this week. I think he's going to be the dude. Uh, this is not a good matchup for him. You launching the missile? Uh, I am launching the missile. Certainly on a week like this week, he's going to be in my lineups. I don't expect massive things for him. I think he's going to be a solid RB2. Is that RB a homing missile? Cause this week? Yeah, because he's playing at home. Okay, okay, okay. 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 No? Yeah. No, no, no. Probably not, um, but I. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, I I think he's going to be a solid running back to not a spectacular week, but I do expect him to be the dude when it comes to the primary runner, the most opportunities to have fantasy relevance, and I think he'll be good rest of season. Uh, one of the most, uh, well, yeah. I mean, anybody else from this game that you have any confidence in? Mo Ali Cox, you want to step back into that world against the 49ers' fifth-ranked tight end defense? Preferably not. Not a great matchup. Peanut butter dwelly time? Preferably not. Never. Ooh, the New Orleans Saints at 3-2 and two take on the Geno Smith-led Seattle Seahawks at 2-4. and four. The DK Sportsbook line, Saints road favorites by 4.5. Over-unders, 42.5. Ew. Worried we're going to see another exact replica of what we saw last night with Teddy Bridgewater and you know that game where it was 17 to 14 I will not be surprised if that's the exact final score See, of this game. This game might be like 10 to 3. Sunday and Monday night Indianapolis Colts Come San on. Francisco 49ers. They can, they can do it. New right? Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. I mean they set this up for two awesome games and these look like two crap fests. We got to believe. Who are the New Orleans Saints? I would well, like to know. Yeah, I mean they're a team that has the Jameis Winston's attempting the second fewest passes per game of any quarterback in football. Um, so you need him to have a touchdown game against Seattle in Seattle. Don't see that happening. 
You don't have the return of Michael Thomas that we hoped and heralded. You have Marquez Callaway, which is fine. I think he's a fine play. Tony, Tony, James Jones, Brooks Jr. Um, went down to injury, went to IR a couple of weeks ago. I was curious. Obviously, this is a team that's not throwing the ball a lot. They want to run the ball because they've got a good defense and they've got Jameis Winston, a quarterback. So I went to look at who's who's being involved now that uh, Tony, Tony, James Jones, Brooks Jr. is gone. And it's nobody. Like, they didn't have another handoff to anyone not named Alvin Kamara. This is um, this is his show right now. So obviously you're going to start him, but it was just surprising to me to see that like it was a hundred percent of the carries to Alvin Kamara, and I don't think they have another option. Yeah, I agree. So it's kind of clear it's Kamara, and then you're taking a chance, right, on the Saints side of the football. Yeah, I mean, I it's one of those things where you cannot, I can't, with intellectual honesty say that Jameis Winston's going to have a good game or that Marquez Callaway or any receiving option. They could. They, they've they done it several times, but you just can't rely on that. I think it's Alva Kamara and look look uh, to the other side of the ball. We've talked at length about Tyler Lockett. He's the wide receiver 64 over the last month. He has fewer points than Jamal Agnew or Chris Moore. Oh. And, um, you know, he's a source of tremendous discomfort for fantasy managers. You know, is he a sit against this defense? Uh, probably. Probably, but... I mean, there are in, some people that are all in on him this week. I say in most cases, like if this were an average week, you're probably able to get away with benching Tyler Lockett, but this particular week, I think you play him. Just because you, you're not going to the waiver wire and playing an inferior you know, wide receiver over Lockett. At least I'm not. Brandon Ayuk... Or Tyler Lockett. That's that's like the barometer check for me. Okay, and I would play. Uh, I guess I would play Ayuk with yeah, George I, Kittle out. I think I would as well. George Kittle out, Jimmy Garoppolo back, Geno Smith in. I I, I lean Ayuk. I couldn't be more unhappy with the fact that Mike took Brandon Ayuk from me. Yeah, I told you he's available too. for trade. <sighs> Gross. <laughs> The running back room, it's a tough one because it's a, a questionable mess in the game's Monday night. So you don't have pivot options on the other side of the ball where you can grab a backup to Alvin Kamara. Yeah, Dwayne Washington's not going to get it done for you. No, and uh, Alex Collins, you know, if he starts, he's starting against a really good run defense in a game with a game script that Geno Smith's probably going to have to throw the football. I mean, if you're down a couple touchdowns, you don't even get the choice to hand the ball off to DJ Dallas, Travis Homer, Rashad Penny, and Alex Collins. Yeah, it's 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 a shame. The injury, the Monday night football, and the matchup all make me avoid Alex Collins. That being said, Alex Collins, he has been a good running back. He yeah. is a talented player. The last three weeks, he's been good for fantasy. So um, you could do worse than Alex Collins, and he could end up just showing out the way that, you know, Dearness Johnson just said, I'm good. I am talented. But – um, do you think it's worth it to go Alex Collins and throw DJ Dallas on the back of your bench, uh, just for the receptions where you, after Collins left the game last week, you saw five receptions pile up real quick for DJ Dallas. Yeah. I mean that, that is a, that's a solid pivot. If you can get DJ Dallas and have that as your pivot for Alex Collins, um, if Alex Collins is out, DJ Dallas might be better than Alex Collins if he's in, because like Andy said, the passing game will be you presume that the Seahawks will need down. it yeah and uh don't forget you can get all of our start sit information on the website the fantasyfootballers.com the start sit tool I'll be here with you on Sunday live trying to sort through all this mess an injury update here Sterling Shepard Darius Slayton both participated in the open port of portion of practice okay I think they're both both going to end up in the game time decision category um, that was insinuated by Joe Judge about Darius Slayton at least and um, you can also catch the Injury Blitz podcast over at jointhefoot.com. Brooks, about what time of day does that normally hit? Um, Late afternoon? I would say, yeah, probably like 5 Eastern we'll throw out there. And are okay. we out of time now before this segment, mm. Al? Do are we, we got don't, time. Just you want me enough. to cut? You don't want me to cut out? Just hit the button. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. 
Well, totally unrelated to that limited time that we had, I ended up the loser in the fantasy face-off last week. Mike mm-hmm. squeezed by Jason by two points. Yes. And I was uh, I was third. I got some uh, big time. What are, what are you doing over there? I was checking my phone. I got a <laughs> notification. You have your, your light on your phone is on. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. So like bla- the light blasted me in the eyes. <laughs> That's funny. So I was like, I I didn't know. Look, I'm on guard right now with the wheel of shame. So I didn't know if you were like going to film something. Oh, you just, I'm a you little wait. edgy. So uh, we do have our lineups for this week. But first, I have to push this button. Wheel of shame. Uh, all right. Spin it. Uh, I got uh free pass. Uh, no, no, it looks like dog cone. Come on, <laughs> oh. dog cone. Dog cone. You. <laughs> I'm an animal. You are. You. Well, you were an animal. I just last had week. surgery. <laughs> yes, you will be. Oh, a is dog. this a pullover? Um, <laughs> with a a cone of shame. I mean, that's perfect. This is the wheel of shame. Yeah, it is. And the now cone it's of turned shame. into the cone of shame for Andy. <laughs> Oh, fantastic! Oh, yeah. Make sure you get the uh, get the dog part of it over the oh. top of the head there. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's a little there's a hood this with some is dog great. ears. Oh. Every <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> this is pretty good. You guys, you did well, and now I can't lick any of my wounds <laughs> from last right. week. Wow, oh. that that's spectacular. You look great. Thanks. I, you know, I feel comfortable. I feel secure, and I look like a fool. Um, this segment is so dumb. <laughs> it's so stupid. This might be my favorite one of the punishments. So I far. mean, this is outstanding. All right, let's get into our uh, lineup breakdowns as I host the show here. Um, at quarterback this week, I'm I'm spinning up. I'm taking Patrick Mahomes at Tennessee in the highest over under. Jason's been wondering who I was playing all week long. Yeah, 8400. I'm going Mahomes. I'm not messing around at quarterback against you two. Yeah, I can't I, look like this again next week. Man, was I really hope it, it's always indicative when we when we announce these lineups what our hopes are. Like I was really hoping you didn't have Mahomes here. Okay, I went Matt Ryan. Um, okay. I have worries. I've got worries. I he is great for the price. Only fifty seven hundred should be good. He's your start of the week. Um, but it's it's scary to take Matt Ryan. It is, and that's why I didn't take Matt Ryan. And that's why I paid up for Patrick Mahomes. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Dang it! All right, at running back, I went with a pair of uh, well, big spender Derrick Henry. I'm taking him in the okay. same matchup. Ninety two hundred. It's big money, Goodness. but I don't care. Okay, so you got Mahomes and Henry. You betcha. And then, uh, Wait, which is great. I mean, that's I would love. Sounds to like have we're going to hear about Dante uh, yeah, Pettis a little bit. The uh, budget picks. And then my other running back, I did. It was only five thousand for JD McKissick, so I took JD McKissick. That's a good play. Yeah, uh, the PPR format on DraftKings. I'm comfortable there. Uh, I I as well went Derrick Henry uh, for ninety two hundred, and I'm pairing him with uh, Daryl Henderson, mm. who should be good at sixty six hundred in like a him, smash yeah. matchup against Detroit. I am. You're. You caught me riding dirty. I will be without Derrick Henry this week. Oh, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I, I've got my exact same combo of running backs that I had last week. Uh, not just because it worked out, but because their, their salary here is just like, yeah, I'll, I'll take these running backs. Daryl Henderson Jr. with you, Jason, is sixty six hundred, and DeAndre Swift, <laughs> DeAndre Swift at just six thousand, playing each other. So it will be interesting. All right, my wide receivers. Guys, I'm I'm making the trifecta of big spenders here. So not only do I have Mahomes and Henry. Where are you finding all this money? Seriously. I've got Devontae Adams. How did you? What? 8900 for Wait, Devontae Adams. Wait, you have Adams. Devontae Adams, Patrick Mahomes, and Derrick Henry. You betcha. And my wide receivers, Darnell Mooney and McCall Hardman, 4600 and 4300 Okay. So Adams combined with the discounts on Mooney and Hardman. Wow. Um, I am really interested for the rest of your lineup. Uh, my wide receivers, I've got AJ Brown, Chris Godwin, and McCole Hardman as well. The value at forty three hundred is is outstanding on him. All right, Har- uh, Godwin with the news today of uh, AB missing. I guess you were speculating on that, or did you pivot into him? I pivoted mid show. <gasps> I had Ooh. I had Marquise Hollywood Brown. You dirty scoundrel! I had Hollywood Brown here, who was I had one hundred. 
dollars remaining on my salary, and Chris Godwin was one hundred dollars more than Hollywood. I Very had, nice. I've got AJ Brown as well. Hopefully, he can keep some food down. We all want some of that matchup, the Kansas City yeah. Tennessee matchup. Uh, and then I am pairing him with Mike Evans, who I did not switch. I speculated and sure, uh, great, great call. They gambled and won there at sixty five hundred and. Calvin Ridley against the Miami Dolphins at just 6,600. So I have a, a big three at wide receiver all in the 6,000 range. Well, here's where I, you know, you got to. Oh, this is where we're all. You got to. You don't have a lot of money left. And so I have bargains with these next three picks. I'm taking a touchdown shot at Robert Tunyon at 3,500. Okay. I am taking the discounted price of Rashad Bateman at 3,400 in my flex. And my bargain defense this week, my favorite cheap defense is actually the coming off the bye Atlanta Falcons against Tua and Miami. Okay. 2700. I don't hate it. I, I I will say this. I really like your line. And I have no salary. Zero dollars left. <laughs> I don't like your ridiculous get up because you look it's, like a, it's such excellent. an idiot. No, it is. It is fantastic. <laughs> but your lineup is good. At tight end, I'm going with my start of the week, Zach Ertz against the uh, against the Houston Texans uh, at 3900. I have JD McKissick in my flex. He's one of your sure. running backs. And the Arizona Cardinals at 3,100 against the Houston Texans round out my lineup. I have the Cardinals oh, uh, to match with Jason. I so have, guaranteed. I have Rashad Bateman to match with Andy. And then I had to save cash somewhere where I spent up at the other positions. So I'm following my start of the week at the, yeah, the $3,000 bargain price. Cole Komet against uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Just hope he gets a touchdown. All right, you can download the DraftKings app now and use the code Ballers this week. I this is so hard to take. I can't. It's hard to talk. <laughs> it, why don't you Why don't you go ahead and close out this segment? Uh, just gonna say the the best part of this segment is when someone looks so stupid and then they go back into regular show <laughs> mode, show host mode, and it's like you know, download the DraftKings app now. Use the code Ballers uh, this week. New customers get a shot, a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's code Ballers only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. All right. Any other breaking news, Brooksy? We do have the Halloween episode next Friday because I think Halloween falls on a Sunday. Ooh. That's correct. Yeah, so we are doing our Halloween episode. Very excited about that. It's on a Sunday? So Friday's our episode. That is, so it'll be another uh, dad's got the headphones in while we're trick-or-treating? Oh, for football games? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. My kids are almost at the age where it's like... You send them off? Yeah, it's getting close. Okay. We'll see. I mean, that Sunday night game, we already know that it's, it's oh, not... Oh, no, no, that was not... Wasn't the Sunday night game the indie game? That's but it's next week. Oh, that's right. It's that's not this right. week. Uh, anyways, Halloween episode in one week. We always have a lot of fun with that. And Sunday live one hour before kickoff. Ballerslive dot com. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers and uh, the communities that join the foot dot com. Well, guys, I'm done. I'm done with this episode. Oh, wow. This was this was <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> but um, hopefully, I'm not licking my wounds next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.